malo pitanje. Kto mješkač v Krokrovija? Šprenke to gore, tak, čekajem. Kto koha mješkač v Krokrovija? Renke do kure. Gotcha. Renke do kure, renke do gure. Yeah, tak? My kids taught me that, so. Exactly. I, I can see, I can see I've been living here for a little bit of time, but the reason I asked that question, first of all, is primarily because Krakowians tend to be very passionate about their city, especially in the context of Warsaw, so <laughs> I think it's important. And passion is what this talk is about. I mean, I'm a little bit uh, odd that I was following Seth Godin, at least uh, with regards to the previous thing, but it's actually very key because he's talking about cr starting a movement, and I think this is actually a little bit tied to what I want to talk about. So Krakow is Europe's Silicon Valley. What exactly is that, and is it even relevant? I think that when I first came to Krakow, and it's almost been four years, this was an idea I, I kind of came with because I'd had some experience in Silicon Valley, but also what I found was there was already an idea that this place could become that because we already had some critical mass. But as we take that forward, why is that even important? Why is that relevant? And I think that it's important to understand what is Silicon Valley, at least in my context. And I think some of the elements we'll talk about, but I think that one important thing to note is that it is incredibly an interesting place. And it's, it's magical, not because it looks nice, because I have to say, it doesn't. But the creativity that's there is really amazing. And I think that people want to be there from all over the world. And I think that's actually where I started to see the connection to what's happening in Krakow today for us. But I also look forward when I have, you know, I have three kids, when I look forward 20 years, is it going to be a place where they want to be? Or are they going to want to leave Krakow and go to London or go to Silicon Valley? And that's the concept I have in my mind is that not necessarily Silicon Valley, but is it a place where there's great jobs, where people want to be, where people are actually coming from Silicon Valley to Krakow, yeah? Or from other places in the world. And that's the core of what I'm, that's the vision I have of uh, Silicon Valley in Krakow. So trying to address this question of what exactly is Silicon Valley. If you think about a timeline of Silicon Valley in California, in the 1950s, Silicon Valley was simply a concept. And it was actually a concept that wasn't really widely distributed. It started with a couple of very big multinationals that started to grow. And as they grew, there were some people in the middle ranks and the executive ranks that said, this is interesting, but I could do it better. And they ran off and they started their own companies. And then 10 years later, those companies gave, got big enough that they spun out entrepreneurs. And then you started to see this ecosystem develop. And I think that by the time you hit the 1980s, you talk about Apple, you talk about companies like Cisco and Google coming out uh, later in that years, that decade, it really evolved. And so it started with a marketing ploy, pure hype, l largely speaking, but the reality actually followed it. And I think this is something to put in context because I'll tell you, I don't know how many conversations I've had in Krakow or in, in Central Europe or beyond, where people are like, you're just talking smack. Yeah, I am. But again, there's some foundational elements that the marketing piece led into it ultimately became reality. And so we talk about a marketing miracle. I think that that has an element of truth to it with regards to Silicon Valley, but a data point is critical, $176 billion. If you look at Silicon Valley with the gross domestic product, the GDP of the actual, as if it was a country, it's $176 billion. So if you looked at that as a country on the world stage, it would sit between Ireland and Finland. That's how much money is generated for at an aggregate of the economy in Silicon Valley. And so I think that's actually important to note that, yeah, it started with marketing, but it became a reality. So another version of Silicon Valley's stereotype is, is it a corporate cash cow? I'll give you three examples of what that means from my perspective. So if we look at three companies in Silicon Valley, one of them being basically uh, Google, one being Oracle, and another one being Cisco. Annual revenues last year. So if we look at what that actually boils down to, $34 billion, $36 billion, and $43 billion respectively. So each of those companies generates that much revenue every year. I can't even conceive of a billion dollars, much less $40 billion. And so is it a corporate cash cow? I think it absolutely is. And again, note that because these are multinationals that actually span the world. And it's an important point to note as well that each of those companies started in Silicon Valley with one or two people with a great idea. And that's actually very important to note because that's where it began. So the third one, 
Is it a genius magnet? For those of you who don't know, this is actually a, an actor. I think it's called, it was like Napoleon Dynamite was the movie, but he actually portrayed a young Bill Gates with Bill Gates in some very hilarious commercials. And I, I would say that leading into Bill Gates, largely speaking, you may not call him a genius, but certainly there was an amount of brilliance associated with both his technical vision, but also his business execution. And those are actually critical elements for creating a business. And again, talking to the numbers that tie back to Silicon Valley, there's two points that I think are very interesting. First of all, 25%. So the United States does a lot of the patents, right? So the patents are around the, the legal protection of intellectual property. 25% of the global patents in the world are actually generated in California. And 12% of the patents in the world are generated in Silicon Valley. So that's a huge, so 12% in the world are generated in Silicon Valley. So is it a genius magnet? I think by any measure, it absolutely is. Talent likes to be there. And that's why, going back to the previous slide, multinational companies are born with world-class winning ideas from this super concentration of incredible ideas and people that are located in Silicon Valley. So I think that's an important point to note as well. So as we drill back up and we look about, we hear about Google, we hear about all these companies that are just fantastic. Okay. However, the road to Silicon Valley, and this is the unspoken truth, the road to Silicon Valley is okay. paved with failed companies. So for every okay. super spectacular success, there's two or three one, companies that actually okay. fail. And I think that this is actually important to understand okay. because people love to celebrate success, but there are, there's a huge fear of failure. And it's understandable, I think it's human nature. But in Silicon Valley, people wear that badge of failure often as a badge of pride um, because they kind of regenerate and they, come, they keep coming back to the system because of their persistence and because their culture in Silicon Valley allows for that. And I think that this will tie into the next slide, but it's important to note that there's a cycle of, of creative destruction in capitalism, especially in Silicon Valley, that's very unique. And it's something that I think we're starting to see in Krakow. So for those of you that know me, um, I also have a very big passion about farming. But I, fortunately, Trina was very good in uh, hitting a lot of the fantastic points around agriculture. But I had to throw in at least a nature slide at the end of the day, because I think it's very apt to describe exactly what Silicon Valley business culture is about, and it's an ecosystem. So it doesn't necessarily operate independently. All these pieces actually interact to create a holistic whole. And so as the water cycle is depicted in this slide, Largely speaking, the water evaporates, it goes into the clouds, then it comes back down in the form of precipitation. And if you look at the business culture in Silicon Valley, largely speaking, that business culture is actually a similar ecosystem in serial entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs that start companies, succeed or fail, and then if they succeed, they might start again, or if they fail, they start again anyway, but it's that repetitive cycle and that lack of fear to kind of keep going at it and to, to kind of realize their passions that makes this cycle happen. And that's actually very important. So serial entrepreneurs are the water of the ecosystem. So ultimately, Silicon Valley, from my perspective, it's just the greatest concentration of entrepreneurial talent and companies in the world. And I think that I'll talk about it in the next slide, but largely speaking, it is an ecosystem at every pillar is in equally important. You can't have one without the other. So what are the foundations of Silicon Valley? Here, the, this is one perspective. Again, other people could argue it all day long. The four pillars of Silicon Valley, from my perspective, top universities. I think it's critical because it provides people, the talent, which are actually obviously the, the main component, with raw ideas. They haven't actually developed necessarily, they're still learning. Um, but they also have the ideas amongst themselves, the brainstorming, the, the networking. Multinational companies, this cannot be discounted because global companies Largely speaking, they drive the, the global economy. And so they provide a number of things. They train the talent, they make them experienced, right? They overall, they actually bring global cutting edge ideas to the table, and they provide an exit strategy. So very often they buy small companies for obscene prices. Um, venture capital, Sand Hill Road is the, is the road that everyone knows about in Silicon Valley if you're from California, where all the venture capital, or at least a lot of it, is actually located. That's a critical element because yes, they provide funding, but the best venture capitalists also provide expertise, which is very important for people that want to grow their companies. And finally, it's the serial entrepreneurs. Again, as, as I talked about in the previous slide, serial entrepreneurs are the people that basically overcome the natural human fear of failure and are able to get back in the fight every time, every time. And I think that's actually extremely important to make this thing happen. And the final piece is actually this horizontal uh, arrows that are going back and forth across are the networks. And that's actually 
crossing, it's the relationships that align between the various boxes, and it's those relationships that set this model on fire. And keep that in your mind, because I'll come back to it later. So this is the controversial slide, so hopefully I haven't just alienated half the room. Top universities, Ageha and Jagiellonian. Don't kill me, I put Ageha first. So hopefully, <laughs> and I put others, which is probably bad as well. But um, yeah, I probably have some stalkers now, but hopefully that won't be the case. But um, so when I, when I grade, I use the stoplight system, right? So red, green, yellow, green is good, yellow is moderate, red bad. Uh, green, top universities, I think we're there. 250,000 students a year in Krakow. I think it's actually fantastic. If we could break some rankings on the international scene, that would be great as well, but we can work step by step. Multinational companies. Let me tell you, I work for a multinational company. There are many, country, or many countries and cities across the world that would die to have the kind of presence that you have with multinational companies here in, in uh, Poland, so it's fantastic. Venture capital, again, you have fantastic venture capital, at least to start with. We have two ve residents, uh, venture capitalists here, Internet Investment Fund, Innovation Tech, Krakow Technology Park also supports it. I think it's quite important. Serial entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, we have a lot of folks in the room, but we also have a lot of folks that are out of the room that really are part of this ecosystem. And four years ago, there were really no networks to speak of. Today, we have them all over the place. TEDx is one specific one, the Hive, Crackspot, the Crack of Network, these things are actually happening, and I think it's quite amazing. So what is possible with a, a passionate and an empty pocket? Largely speaking, if you Google Crack IT, that was an idea four years ago. I had a, on my hard drive a list of uh, a spreadsheet of IT companies that were in Krakow, and uh, I had the cooperation of a couple of folks in Krakow, just uh, you know, in my network, and largely speaking, Kamil Kozielewski's out here, he actually, we were able to post this out to the internet, and now it's, it's actually, I would say, a really hit site with regards to trying to understand what's going on in Krakow, and we had no money, it was just an idea, and in fact, it was like, free, largely speaking, just required passion and tenacity to make that happen. So what's my call to action? Two things, one is for all of you, and one of them is actually individually, and one of them is for all of us. First of all, get educated, right? Find resources, both physical and virtual, and actually educate yourself around things. Secondly, brainstorm like there's to tomorrow. There's a lot of iteration that's involved with getting to around your passion. That's critically, critically important. And then from a group perspective, build the community. And that's actually both the community here, the community that's not in this room, and actually moving down, uh, down the list into younger and younger people talking about what entrepreneurship is like as a career. Celebrate success and failure. And a term we use at West Point, cooperate and graduate. People have to work together to make it to the next level. And to, to get Krakow to Europe, Silicon Valley, we need to cooperate amongst each other. So it's absolutely critical. And remember that the competition is not Warsaw or Wrocław, as was actually a previous uh, speaker said. It's actually Bangalore, Shanghai, places like this. So my last slide, be the seed, right? Each of you in the audience has a tremendous amount of human potential that's God-given to you. Right? You need to find that, you need to unleash it. And I'll leave you with a quote. It's actually from uh, St. Catherine of Siena, and it's always moved me. If you are who you ought to be, you will set the world on fire. If you are who you ought to be, you will set the world on fire. If we can capture even a fraction of the potential that's in this room and outside of this room, we will definitely make it to this vision of Krakow Silicon Valley. So, thank you very much.